Okay, in this short video, you're going to see how to underpin a shallow footing. But you can see this footing was poured at about 10 to 12 inches. So what happened is we have a 16 foot length of addition that had sagged and stressed and fell. If you look at the brick line, you'll see the difference there going up right by the window. So what we're doing according to code is we're going to do what's called underpin, which is basically what you see here, the little pipe here is holding our form out. And what we do is we've dug down 36 inches below grade and we're going to actually fill all of this area with solid concrete. And what that'll do is that'll go all the way under to about 18 inches across going to come all the way up to the bottom of this existing shallow footer and frankly I can't believe that this thing hasn't settled more and on this particular portion we're turning a corner so the technique involved is real simple our engineer here designed this so we can do sections and if you look this way we have one section skip the section then we did a section four foot skip four four foot we did those two sections first, then we backfilled that, then we dug out the remaining four foot section. On this section we picked up again from here, four foot and two foot which is our remainder on the corner. Now if you look in there you'll see the rebar set, a little hard to see with the lighting. Okay, so what that rebar does is that reinforces that concrete. And in underpinning, we're just coming up with a slurry to pack up and under the existing footing, which will give this a proper footing, but it'll prevent any other further movement of this. So here's the finished product on this side. You'll see the old footing, which is the ledge where the brick is at. And this would be the new footing packed up and under, and it swells up and over. And as we tamp it down, we get a slurry that comes up and under, comes up the grade and matches and butts up underneath the existing footing so what we end up with here is a six foot section and from this corner here all the way back to that split in the window which i'll show you again okay we have 16 foot so we have 16 foot and six done in increments four foot skip four four foot skip four two is part of the corner and four foot which was done last week now the recommendation if you have an issue like this definitely get an engineer he'll tell you how to work the job you do have to go by code your local inspector is going to have to come out and take a view of the existing rebar and we'll see if we can get a little light down in there i doubt that we can let's see there we go might be able to get that now right, there's a little bit of light there so you can see some rebar Okay, and show it to you that way. You see the rebar. So when you do the rebar, basically we're just doing a 12-12 grid pattern. It's just you know 12-inch st stepped pins are 36 inches from the ground up. Tie them together. You make a checkered pattern going around, and we're centering that inside of the footing. So if you come over here, this is one that we just poured today, and you can see. The shelving is the old footing. That's it. 12 inches deep, and they built their brick right on it, and this is what you end up with. See the shift? That's how you know there's settlement here. So that's already shifted years. This is probably 50 years old, and we can see it's already shifted more than an inch. Someone went in there and repaired the brick, which is in vain. Okay, so back to this real quick. That's the finished version. Remember, we did this four foot, we skipped four, then we went four foot. Okay, today, we excavated the other day, today we just poured this four foot section. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect, but you want a continuous solid pour all the way across, one abutting and connecting to each other, and we do that through rebar. Okay, and the easiest way I could think, of, think for you to do this is simply place your boards the way we have them, backfill a little bit into where you don't want to go crazy with the concrete, but you want to be the depth of the footing. And then bend your board out. That'll give you access.
to fill it. And just keep tamping it and slurrying it up, pouring it in there. Okay, so just a little bit of a tip. That's just one way that you could do to underpin an existing inferior foundation. When everything's done, we'll backfill, bust out our wood tops, and then we'll regrade the entire section. Hope you learned a little tips here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And thank you very much.